Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is part two of our squishy project bag. An idea dreamt up by Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio and myself sitting around chatting based on a um, Japanese rice bag project that I did earlier in the year. Um, Susanna's doing more of a classic style as in using a sewing machine to make sure that all of her raw edges are hidden within the lining and the pretty bit on the outside and I'm doing this more hand stitched rough edged piece so you don't need a sewing machine when you construct it my style. So giving you a few different options I thought I'd turn the video back on because I'm still working on the lining as such and I thought I'll bring you up to speed suppose I can remove this little tacking stitch now. Um, I have done a running stitch through the whole piece and as I said I would just draw myself some lines. Uh, decided just to make it easy on myself because we were watching a movie and I just didn't want to think so having the lines is great I could just whiz along I think it was a lot quicker too because I was less likely to stop and um, pull it out so just using my friction pen I just ran the lines through and I've since uh, ironed it and they've just disappeared so I can still see a little bit there so I need a little bit more ironing actually so that's my base ready to go now the, the bottom ready to go. Now inside the base looking down is this piece. So I did a little bit of stitching on this one as well. Like I said in the last video, I just did some lines down the side here following the stripe in the fabric. And then I was thinking about going around the outside of the whole piece. And I decided against it because it gets a little bit fussy in around here and to do a stitch an outline around that I just thought it wouldn't look real good and then you'd lose the delicate print of those roses so I opted for good old seed stitch now at the moment I've just seed stitched whooshes of them coming out from the um, floral arrangement so just a hint of it I've even put a little bit up here as if it's sneaking back in scooted through there so I've tried just, I don't know, get a bit of a circular feel about it. So I kept my stitches in a curve. Um, I thought it just complemented the layout of the flowers. Now I did say I wasn't going to do anything to these because, um, you know, it's in the bottom of the bag. So really it's over and above requirements, but I couldn't help myself. So I have stitched the cream that is on that flower so i'll bring it up to the camera so you can see you can see all those little stitches there so the plan is to find a red or a pink that may suit these others and i'm going to do some stitching on them so i thought i better turn the camera on because once again i'm getting ahead in the project and I thought I better slow down. What I'm thinking with these roses is just doing the outer of them. If I get too crazy in the center, I'm gonna lose a lot of that detail and there is a lot of detail there. So to stitch the center, there's a lot of colors and stitches needed where the outside is nice and big and I can just do some big stitches. I'm thinking that burgundy is gonna be good on that flower. And this guy, I'm thinking just the throat deep into there. So whether I've got a stitch, or maybe I bring in another colour. What's not a stitch? Have I got a colour to suit? This one here might. Oh, I can't get them out. My fingers are cold this morning. Not that it's cold. I'm in Brisbane compared to my time in Melbourne. So I shouldn't be complaining. Yeah, that one's good. So that one and that one are my two colors. So if you do have this fabric, DMC 902 and 3721. Now being that's written in pencil tells me that it's been around a while. So it's possible that color may have a new number 
but like always just take your fabric to your to your um cottons and yeah make your selections accordingly so i hope you can see what i'm going to do i'm going to leave it at three uh six strands because the first flower is using the crochet cotton and it's got a reasonable thickness to it so i think i'm thinking i will stay with that thickness oh, there's something i learned at the retreat with miss nikki franklin is hear this popping sound you wait you'll hear it got the knot in the way hear this hear that that means my needle is not big enough for the thread that it's dragging through it's popping so it's not a problem and in, you know i actually like that sound i find it quite therapeutic but if you were doing a lot of stitching let's say you were working in an embroidery house and you were making couture that had a lot of um, embellishing that little bit of friction that popping sound after it came out after a while would put a lot of pressure on your joints and your fingers so that would be a sign that the artist would stop and change their needle out so i thought that was interesting because it's all pressure on those joints and i should probably should stop and change my needle out because it's pressure i don't need i guess i don't know if you can see this guys but I'm just painting it in. Let me zoom in a little bit so you get the general gist. Can you see? Ah, oh, you can't see that. I should have turned the camera on when I was doing that, but you can at least see those cream stitches. It's a combination of short stitch, long stitch, and even a little bit of split stitch where your needle penetrates the stitch above or the stitch below as it goes back through the fabric. That really helps map down your stitches. So I'll just do this little petal here and then we'll pick up the other thread. Yeah, this is going to be good. I know I'm not going to see it and for goodness sakes, this is probably ridiculous. If you're time poor, don't, don't bother with this step. But if you'd like to rummage to the bottom of the, the barrel and view the bottom of the barrel... <laughs> Well, then I guess stitch away. See, I can already feel that my fingers, because they're cold, I'm gripping onto that needle and it's, it's an effort. Yeah, see, I'm pulling at it. It's because my fingers are cold. My feet are cold, my fingers are cold, so I went and put some slippers on. See, this is a Queensland girl that thinks that she can just trot around with barely any winter clothing on. And it'll be right. It'll warm up soon. I've only got a couple of hours, but it just hasn't. The sun is out. And if I was to go outside to the sun, I'd be more than warm. But I haven't got there yet. I need to go out and sit with Pepper and Bandit and warm up, warm up the cockles. Okay, this is an old girl. It's obviously been in a project. I'm going to have to rummage to get to a six strands unless I can combine some. Let's see what we've got here. So that's, that's four and I think that's two. Okay, here we go. We're rebuilding the original cotton. Not as long, but that's that's fine. Rejoin it. It's now back to six. And let's change our needle. Let's see if my theory, if my story is correct. If I get a, a bigger needle, we shouldn't hear or feel the drag. And the last thing I guess we want is our stitching to be a drag. Don't do that. 
that's it. Okay. Now that's going to go over here and it's going to be in the throat. So I might start up here. Yeah, see? Oh, still no, no relief. Yeah, I can still feel the tension. My goodness. I could, I really struggled to thread the needle. So it's probably still not quite the right size needle for this. The other thing too is I've got quite a good thick wadding behind. So the popping's not as bad. If I just shush up for a minute, you can have a listen. It's not as poppy. So I think I had, yeah. And I'm finding that the pulling through of the thread is not as much of a draw. So I've definitely got better in this selection. Yeah, definitely. I can feel that the friction against my body is less. Isn't that interesting? I guess too, um, I've heard other YouTubers say that if your needle's not the right size and you're forcing your floss or your threads through, you're just roughing up your threads. Every time you drag that thread or fibre through your fabric, you're, you're roughening it up or changing its structure, I guess, from what the manufacturer, manufacturer did. And I, I think too, we, we need to be mindful of our joints when we're doing all this stitching and just um, taking a moment to review our practices and are they putting pressure on our bodies, even just getting up and walking around after what does um, Mr. Google or Mr. Apple say every 15 minutes or something? Or every 20 minutes, we're supposed to get up and walk around. Office workers, stretch, and, and that's like makes a lot of sense. But we don't, do we? We just want to get to the end of that row or just one more petal or it's silly. <laughs> Okay, so you get the general picture of what I'm doing here, just painting in those flowers. Everyone's painting flowers at the moment. So even if you were to go to YouTube and thread painting flowers and type that in, all sorts of videos pop up. So it's really nothing new, just embellishing fabrics and celebrating the artist that has gone before you that created this beautiful fabric. So I don't like to change it too much, but, you know, I then do put the Corinne stamp on it. Okay. Getting to the end of that. See, it goes pretty quick, especially if you use thick threads like wools and things. It's quite surprising how quickly you can paint a flower. And you don't have to do the whole flower. You can just pick interesting areas. I did consider doing the leaves when I was looking at this piece. And I thought, no, I think the roses have to have the treatment if I'm going to do anything. And I'm glad I did because it's worked out beautifully. Now we finish this little guy. I think you can probably see this thread marginally better. So I could come back and put some French knots in the center, some beads. What I might do is find some roses to go on the outside. I feel like I need to really go to town on an outside panel. Speaking of panels, when I was stitching the seed stitch in that, it gave me a chance just to sit and think because I had a million ideas floating in my head. And I also went back to my original notes when um, 
like I said, when Susanna from Vintage Blend Studios called me, I was sitting at the airport waiting for my flight. So I was in a quiet spot and had my notebook out and was just putting ideas down. I've got a notebook that I write things down on. I've only started it in the last month because it was just getting out of hand. I had so much going through my brain, variations of projects that I've done and just random things that pop into my brain or I'd see something and go, oh, I haven't done that for years. I must explore that technique again. So I said to my husband, I'm going to get myself a notebook that I can just pick up. I'm going to leave it by my couch or take it with me on a, a trip when I have time out just to think and just write it down. So I found a great one on um, uh, our big stationery mob here, uh, Officeworks. I've actually got it nearby. I'll show you. Oh, gosh, I'm going off on a tangent now. It's just sitting here. This is it here. Um, let me zoom up. Okay, so it's a decent size, like it's two hand height. Zoom up a bit more, girl. I need to get this bracelet off too. It's clinking. You put on a piece of jewellery to go away and I should take it off. Because now that I'm back to the, the daily duties, it's becoming a clinking sound on the video. So, okay, I'm happy now. So, yeah, I found this at Officeworks. Um, there's the label. I haven't had a chance to even take that off. If any of you Aussie girls wanted to grab one, its code is 0TPLMTRNB, and that's the brand. You've got to search for a little bit. comes in three, four colours, black, mustard, the green, the sage green and a burgundy colour. So I've since gone back and ordered the black and the mustard because I'm I'm going to put use them for different things, so to speak. Anyway, I like it because it's got this little zipper thing. So I've put myself a friction pen in there. Love these for writing in journals because you can erase your thought or your spelling mistake or whatever um it does have a pen holder but um yeah it's great and i'm just sketching down ideas anything that i'm sort of thinking about some different you know bits and pieces so i went back to susanna's um idea when she rang me and we were sort of just sitting and chatting and I've since added a little snippet of the fabric that I've used. So in the future, I can come back and say, okay, what, what was my idea? How did it um, come to fruition? And, you know, this is where we were talking about all the pockets to go on the inside of the bag. Excuse my sketching, but it's just, you know, rough. The pockets I've since been thinking a little bit more about. And I'm going to put mine on the outside of the bag because why i don't know because i'm just i'm loving this fabric too much to cover it i might put the scissors on the inside because i wouldn't want them to fall out but I, i'm not sure yet but i'm 99 percent sure my pockets are going to go on the outside and i think it's because i've got these beautiful blank spaces that i can play a bit more with and I can really start using some of the scraps that were left like they're still sitting here beside me they're just rolling around on the table so I think it'll be a couple pockets on the outside it'll be um, I, I have to find a rose or an image of a rose that I can do some stitching on so it's going to be a combination of those sorts of things and that way it can sit on my desk as well and hold some tools it can go with me and hold tools and I'm not you know you pull your project out of the center and then I'm sitting let's say at with a heap of girls stitching the bag can just be sitting there and I can take my scissors out and slide the scissors back in I can take my notebook out or some threads out 
Um, additional pockets could be put inside for spares. It's up to you. But I'm going to make, I think, the outside have more pockets. And then I was going through my list that I did with Susanna. And one thing I jotted down at the time and I'd forgotten about is I'd written needle book. And I mentioned in the last video a belly band. So that must have been where that idea was sort of in the back of my head, but I didn't finish my thought. And um, the belly band, I think, is going to hold a needle book. So just a little, and I can make it out of these. So it'll be another little thing I can make and slide in. And it doesn't have to be big. It's just to hold, you know, a couple needles and a couple pins. Uh, another idea that's just popped into my head. Oh my goodness, where's my needle book? Here it is. Hang on. Is this is handy? It's just a little bag. You know, they you get them organza bag. I better write this in my book because I will forget once I finish this video. Um, you get those little organza bags at the two dollar shops. And um, I put in there my thimble, a needle threader, all those random things that you sort of can't really stick in a pocket, but a little bag. And I just stitched it in. See the top there? There's a button holding that little organza bag. So let me write this down, guys, before I forget. So extra ideas. A... Um, <clears throat> Drawstring, little bag for buttons, and your thimble. Okay, it's in the green book. Oh, I've just got to do it, guys. I have to write stuff down. It's just getting out of hand. <laughs> Especially when you start talking to some of the fellow YouTubers, we can't help ourselves. We start brainstorming ideas and what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You know, it's it's such a lovely, lovely community. And then you guys say things you're like, oh, Corinne, you could do this, you could do that. And I'm like, oh, you're a genius. So I've got a book now. It's the Sage book. We're going to be getting it out of my head and onto paper. I'm sure there's a psychologist or a psychiatrist out there that would say that's a very good idea for you, Corinne. There we go. See, just a little stitch. Probably no one will ever notice it, but I know it's there. I'll work that little bit there later. So let's have a little tidy up, girl. Just put that thread away because we don't need it now. How quickly does your workspace explode? It's just my little project container. Going to need that later. And I will finish stitching that. So then that piece will be finished. This guy is already finished. Now, Casper wants to come in. Hang on. I closed the door and Casper's there. Won't be a minute. Come on, Casper. Hello, puss. How are you this morning, young fella? All right, back to what I was going to do next. Now, these panels are on the inside. So, if they get a pocket, which will be another episode another day, they will just have it stitched on. Thinking scissors, probably, would be a good one. But in the meantime... I need to give them a bit of a stitching treatment. So let's have a look at this one first. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm just going to do some running stitch. I was going to stitch all these down with some invisible stitch. But I haven't done that yet. But that's okay. Where's my ruler? 
what I'm going to do is give myself some extra lines and I'm going to then just iron them out. Must put that pen away because that pen does not come out. And one would be very disappointed with herself if she had picked it up by mistake. So what I'm going to try and do is come up with some lines in a few spots that complement complement the design. So I'm just sort of looking at this panel. I think definitely another one over there. I might do a broken stitch down the side of there. Just a hint of it. Let the little red stitch do its thing. Not the red stitch, the red line, you know, be there in its own space. Not, not embellishing is what I'm trying to say. Then I'm going to come down here. I didn't think too much of the design when I chopped these all out. So now it's the challenge of... I guess if it doesn't look right, you just and pull it out and have another go. But I think we can make this little floral line here look a little more interesting. So my internal panels are just going to be enhanced with stitches. Other than a scissor thing. I think I should put my scissors inside, but I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that. Jump up there, drop a couple little stitches in. I might just do a little invisible stitch on the way just so that it's not such, such a big jump. And then by the time we get to the end of this video, I'll have a plan for all of these internal panels. And that'll be my homework to finish them. Then in the next video, we will stitch them together. Like I did in the first video, I pinned them. So that gave you a bit of a, a quick snapshot of where I was heading. If I was organized, I'd have this project made. And right at the beginning video, you would see it finished and go, oh, yes, I'd like to do that. But that's not me because I do daily videos. I literally just make it on the fly with you guys. Nut it out together. Okay. So yeah, it's just, just a little stitch. And jump across to this side. That's not going to take long at all, so that's that's good. I'm sure there's heaps of other little decorative stitches one could do down there, but at the end of the day, it's the inside of the bag. And I think I'll put my energy into thinking about the panels on the outside of the bag. So I think um, this project will be, the first three videos will be getting started, internal bag construction, then the actual construction of it. And then the remaining six videos will be each panel and what kooky ideas I can come up with. That stitch is a little big. What uh, clever ideas I can come up with for each panel. So all going to plan, it'll be nine videos to get the job done. And I'm thinking, I haven't yet spoken to Susanna, but I'm thinking it'll be one a week. So it's, I'll just 
scatter them through the week. I will have to find out what day Susanna's thinking because Susanna does um, two to three videos a week. So I'll have to find out what day she's going to post hers and then I'll follow, follow in after that. So you'll see Susanna's first and then within a day or so. I'm going to pull that out because I've gone not only crooked, but I've got these little tiny stitches here that don't look right. Back it up. It's just a nice little detail there. I should be zooming in so you can see. Let's zoom in again, guys. Can you see the little stitch just sneaking through? Just a little, little detail. Gone quiet. Suddenly work popped into my brain. I've got a bauble issue. It's not an issue, but it's frustrating. I have um, a factory in China that makes my range of baubles for my Christmas shops. And they do a beautiful job. Absolutely beautiful. I love my baubles there. We've hunted and hunted to find a, a nice manufacturer. And uh, they're two young lads that started the factory. And they had tried quite a few products in their process of, you know, what are we going to make? I think, I think there's a parent factory behind it, you know, their mum and dad that bake paints, but I'm not sure, like they paint things and bake them. So these two sons, they'd probably be 25 and 30. These lads, they're hilarious. One of them has studied here in Australia and has gone back with you know a bit of formal business training and the other son he's he's not interested in coming here he just wants to hit the ground running so the lads with I'm sure the guidance of mum and dad have decided to set up their own manufacturing so they've tried a few things and I saw a couple of years ago those few things and I was like yeah no I can see why that didn't take off you know just random ornament type things for the home it was really random stuff so anyway they've got on to baubles Christmas baubles simple once they have your mold and they've done some that have like little indents on them and patterns so that makes them quite interesting and when I was there they were investing into glitter <laughs> it was really funny so they were so keen to get our business they were like you you pick pattern you pick glitter you pick color we make like I'm talking Chinese now and um, so it was fantastic because I was able a lot of their packs didn't really interest me I sort of need specific things. So I was able to go through all their packs and go like this bauble, this bauble, and this bauble. Can you make this one, this color, that, you know, create combinations? Yep, yep, no problems. I got the sizes I wanted. I made some standard packs, some bauble, big bulky packs, you know, for the, the family that just want one big barrel of baubles to put on their Christmas tree. And then I've got the range for the designers out there who want to, you know, place certain size baubles on the tree so long story short everything's been going well until probably two years ago my white baubles turned up and there's a mix in there of glitter matte and a pearlized finish and they have been beautiful and they're a real polar white as you would imagine snow to be so what's happened is two years ago the pearlized version of the bauble wasn't white. It was an off-white like this cotton. So it looked terrible. I think I've got a photo. Is my phone here? No, it's not. I'll put a picture at the end of the video. You'll see what I mean. Chelsea, um, my manager, she took a photo because the containers arrived 
with all the baubles in it and the off-white pearlized bauble is back. Now it was an easy fix for us at store level because we had to, it just looks, doesn't look right. So we unpacked all of the packs of baubles. We're talking thousands of packs of baubles and repack them into two styles. We put all those pearlized off-white baubles in one pack and then just made a mix of the, the white baubles in the other pack. And they looked beautiful. And it sort of worked out okay in the end because if people were doing, say, rose gold and um, champagne as a theme on their Christmas tree, the pearlized off-white bauble looked beautiful and if they were doing say red and silver and they wanted a pop of white on their tree they would buy the pack that had the white polar white baubles in it but the pearl ones were slow to sell it's you know one of those colors that's probably a little bit you know modern on a tree so it wasn't a problem we split the packs it took us hours but the staff just did a few every day and just restocked the box. And then as they came out late in the season to stock the shelf, they were ready to go. We let the factory know. The boys were very apologetic. We said, oh, look, don't worry about it because, you know, it's nearly a happy accident because we, um, we got a new bauble out of it. And the staff loved it because they started making wreaths and swags and garlands with this little pearlized off-white bauble and it just looked beautiful so roll forward to the next year the baubles arrived the pack was mixed and it was perfect there was no pearlized creamy ball they were back to normal we still had some of these left just a few well they sold out last year and they were gone and my manager mentioned oh, I'm gonna miss those little happy accident baubles because um, they actually were beautiful with burgundy. They looked beautiful with, um, oh, we do like Tiffany blue, a, a soft pink, uh, and that creamy pearlized off-white bauble was just beautiful in it. So the staff were a little bit, oh, they're gone. They were fun. So anyway, we get a container of baubles in and the the guys are going through the boxes, checking it all, and yep, everything's good. They open the white, and guess what's back? And they were so excited that these pearl balls were back in stock. So, and it's exactly the perfect timing because we've sold out of those few packs that we did have. And um, we're restocked. So they're just buzzing, and already, like, they send me a picture um of them in the box and going oh no they're the they're the wrong color but yay our pearl baubles are back and then within you know a couple hours pearl baubles are popping up on creative pieces of wreaths and swags and so yeah so i don't know what happened at the factory technically the boys have had a mishap I would say that they probably have a recipe book with my uh, orders in it. This is how I'd run the factory. I would have a job sheet or a recipe book with each client's requests. And I think they've probably somehow gone back to that year and just reproduced the incorrect bauble, but it doesn't matter. A nice happy accident. So there you go. That's why I went quiet. Baubles popped into my brain. It's so typical of crafting. You might not have the exact colour you need, but we tend to go looking and well, what else can we do? How can we make this blend? It's just, it's, yeah, we do it. We do it at our craft table all the time. You've just got to sometimes make things work. And that's the fun of it. It's really 
really good. And that will apply to the sides of this project that I'm doing here because I don't have a lot of fabric from Lucella in this range. And I don't want to buy more. I think I've got enough. So I'm going to have to get creative with maybe even some other little fabrics that might sneak in if I feel I need a little extra. So, and that's the fun of it, isn't it? Blending. I probably won't cut a rose out of that fabric that I used in the base because it's going to chop another chunk out of that beautiful piece of fabric and I don't think I want to do that. So I will have to go hunting for a flower that tones in to my piece that I can then paint with thread on one of the panels. Which will be fun to go hunting. So I'm nearly done this little panel. In the process of doing this, it's like being tacked down. So it's becoming one. I could probably do more lines, but I think I'll leave it at that. I like the space that's between. The artwork, that blue is not being overpowered by me and my stitching. So as for the other panels, they are stripes as well. So what I'll probably do with them is just have a, a look at the pattern and work out, you know, where I can drop a line through without ruining the pattern. I sort of want to enhance it. So let me... Okay, so all I've got to do now is run the line through there and that one there. So let's have a little look at some of these. So a good way to do it, if you're unsure, is get your thread and just start laying it down and see what it sort of looks like. So you could put it in that there. I could use this as a guide to do some stitching like um, fly stitch. Stripes are handy for that type of thing. I could do X's. So with your thread, you can sort of just have a little play and see if you like. I'm going to cut a piece off the X idea. So let's assume that that's stitched into there and then I come back and stitch that into there. I don't know. It would have to be a big stitch and things might get caught on that. So if I did do it, I probably need to put a little stitch in the center there. And even that worries me that that's a bit of a, a, a long stitch. So I don't think I'll do X's. I think stripes it has to be, even the Y stitch. I'd hate for something to get caught. So the Y would be like that. And then of course, then another one and another one. Yeah, I don't think. Practicality wise, would look great, but, but no. Nope. Maybe this fabric will pop up on the outside of the bag and I can do a bit more decorative stitching. So that one's just going to have some lines added. And I think I will do a line in the blue, a line in the red, and then a line in the other blue. Yep. So it'll be a, a three-way stitch. So that's his story. We'll come back to the floral one. This guy here, what I might do with him is go this way. Well, oh no, let's go diagonal. Let's stitch diagonally across the panel. Yep, I like that. 
So that's his story. He will get this this way. All right. Next, what have we got? Another stripe. He'll be similar to the previous one. He's like a sister to this guy. And I'll do the same. I will just slip in there, slip in there, and slip in there. So, uh, and we've got another one. I wonder. Yeah. So they're going to be easy. They're not going to take too long, which is good. This little guy, I might do... I might do him diagonally as well, but come back the opposite way. Yeah, whatever that one is, it'll be opposite to the other one. I think that's what I'll do with them. Okay, so um, the front panels we will come back to another day. Let's go back to where we were and finish this guy. How are we going for time? Oh, we've got a bit of time. So I'm just going to cut myself another thread. And we'll finish this panel. And then I'll leave you in peace so you can go and do what you need to do. Try not to do too much housework today, folks. Let's, let's actually, let's not do any. I've got a mound of washing there I could jump over. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just ignore it. I'm going to close the door to the room. If the door's closed, it can't be seen. And I'm just going to stitch straight lines on my panels and get them all done so that I can come back to you guys and we will stitch all of these panels together. We will even be able to put the two bases together on it, which will be great. It'll be probably be a bit of a stop and start video. Otherwise I won't get it all done in one video, but we'll do a stop and a start. And by the end of that hour, we will have a good chunk of the construction made I think it'll help me too because then when I look at the decorative panels on the outside I can glance to the bag and see what's on the inside and maybe I don't know drag those fabrics to the outside so let's say that this panel is on the inside maybe this is my feature where's my scrap this is my feature on the outside. So it's sister is on it. Yeah, there we go. See, I like rules. It keeps me focused on a target. I don't have guidelines. Well, you know me. It gets a little, little out of hand, doesn't it? So I like that. Yes, yes. Should I write it in the book? I probably should. <laughs> That's all good. We're going to match the outside panel to the inside panel. Mm. We can bring a little highlight. That's just not going to be enough. I have to use that on another spot. We can bring a little highlight from other panels into it, but... It will be mm. thinking. Can you hear the cogs turning? The other thing I did that I forgot to mention is I had cut a hexagon out of my calico canvas fabric and then placed the floral fabric on top of it. Last night, I went to go and start the seed stitching and my hands felt quite weary. I've been doing a lot of stitching lately. So I decided to remove that extra layer and just use the wadding. I don't, th I don't think it was a bad suggestion. So in there was the calico. I think it'll sit plump on the table anyway. I don't think I'm going to miss it. 
but I was my hands were weary. I've got this really thick wool batting, plus there's the layer of the um, cologne fabric which has calico on it, and I sort of felt like that was a nice base. I might, I might even, I know what I'll do. I'm going to put it back in there. Yeah. I'm going to put it back in there and I'll just do some invisible stitch with a nice sharp needle. I think what the problem was is I was using this uh, milliner's needle here and it's quite thick because of the cotton. Therefore, it was really dragging on my hands. Hello, Casper, you're back again. So I ended up thinking, oh my goodness, if I do thousands of seed stitches, I'm going to have an injury. So I took the thickness down a little bit. But, I'm, yes, Casper, I'm going to put it back in now. So my cut piece that I didn't want to do seed stitch through will still be there. But because now I can use a really sharp needle, my hexagon must be a bit skew if that's it. I'll pin that because I love the thickness of all of those layers. It sort of adds interest to the piece. Yeah, I will do some invisible stitch i'll probably just sort of do a star just little stitches right through just so it's you know mats it together yeah that'll work out really well the project is evolving probably drive some of you nuts because you just don't know where I'm heading until we sort of get there but I sort of I like the idea let me zoom out that you guys can go off on your own little rabbit hole tangents because you're seeing you're hearing me talk it through and there might be something that you'll yell at the tv and go oh Corinne I'm gonna do this you know, you head off in your own direction, which I think is just great. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to repin that because it's all skew -if. Find its correct position because my hexagon obviously is a little wonky. It'll get wonky the more you stitch these pieces. It'll pull the fabric into the center. That was another reason why I did this little swoosh of seed stitches. It's sort of helping the fabric, you know, still stay where I want it to stay. All right, so now my base is nice and thick again, and I didn't have to work through all of that. So I can now, I won't use Reginald. He's... We don't like Reginald, he's a nasty little bead needle. But we will need something with a nice, sharp, fine, gonna need my protective piece as well, trying to protect the fingers. And my cotton's not here. For goodness sakes, it's still out at the couch. But don't fear, I always have a cotton near. That rhymed, hang on a minute guys. <coughs> No, I don't. I'd have to go to the sewing machine and actually rip one out of the sewing machine. But it'll just be sewing machine, um, you know, just just cotton. Just something that will blend and disappear. And um, I can use just tiny little stitches, slide through the, all those layers, catch another little bit. And that'll just bring everything together. All right, guys, I think we're there. I'll put that needle in there, ready for my project later. I... I I do have to finish this too, getting a bit ahead of myself. All right, I will leave it at that. We're moving along and the next video will be the construction of all of these pieces. And then we can start on the fancy panels on the outside. All right, 
I will say goodbye and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.